Now when the king lived in the, his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, and do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought the people up out of Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all the places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be a prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and, they will, and I will plant them so that they will dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares that to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your own body. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he will be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the son of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all of these words, and in accordance with all of this vision, Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. And what more am da and, and da eh, what more is David to say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have brought about all this greatness to make your servant know it. Therefore, you're, you are great, O Lord, for there is no one like you, and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on the earth when God went to redeem to be his people, making himself a great name and doing for them great and awesome things by driving out before your people whom you redeemed yourself from Egypt a nation and its gods and you established for yourself your people Israel to be your people forever and you O Lord became their God and now O Lord God confirm forever the word you spoke concerning your servant and concerning his house and do as you have spoken and your name will be magnified forever saying the Lord of hosts is God over Israel and the house of your servant David will be established for you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you, O Lord God. For you have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. Second Samuel 7. I think of all of the passages I picked, this is probably the one that would be the least likely to be picked by somebody else. Um, because it just sort of, I mean, it just sort of comes out of nowhere. Uh, but I think it's a vital link in the chain for how we get from where we're going to, where we are to where we're going, which is to Jesus. Because here we see that the Lord is doing something. And I think this really encapsulates the story of the Old Testament, that 
that God is going to use people like Israel, like David. And he's going to use what he was doing, and he's going to fulfill that through Jesus Christ. And we see that uh, a lot of times in the Old Testament. But I think here is such a clear picture that the Lord says, I will build you a house, and that will be from your son. And we know in the New Testament that Jesus comes from the line of David, and that Jesus does build a house for the Lord forever, and out of the name of David. And, and he takes all of those things that, that we see, read here, and he fulfills them in such a powerful way. And even though this isn't a prophetic text in the sense that it's not Isaiah or Jeremiah, this is one of the most prophetic texts in the whole Testament. And it's such a beautiful encapsulation of what Jesus will do and how even in the Old Testament that has made sense, that the Lord will do something great uh, through his son, which is just a beautiful language. So, yep.